G'day. Welcome to the Neptune Theatre. I'm David Kilderry and today we're going to look at what used to be the world's busiest restaurant. Back in the 1870s, there was a man by the name of Charles Feltman who pushed a pie cart around the streets of Coney Island in New York City. He decided he wanted to serve his customers some hot food, so he got his pie cart modified to boil up some frankfurters or some German sausages. He served these in some buns and a legend was born. The hot dog, as it became to be known, was called the Frankfurter by Charles Feltman. The very next summer, he rented a plot of land on Surf Avenue in Coney Island and a legend was born. Let's have a look back at the history of the world famous Feltman's restaurant. Initially, Feltman chose quite a small little shack to sell his Frankfurters and beer from. But as the years went by, his audience grew quite quickly and he was serving very large amounts of customers before too long. One of the main reasons was his location. Here's Feltman's located right on Surf Avenue and West 10th Street. Just along from him, after a few years, was built the amazing Dreamland Amusement Park. Across the road was the well-known Lunar Park, the original, and not far away, just a few blocks, was George C. Tillieu's Steeplechase Park. These three big parks at their peak drew in thousands of customers every single hour, all coming from New York on the ferries, which loaded and unloaded their customers at these iron piers that went out into the bay. Feltman's was also located across the road from the railway, so he had a very good location in order to capitalise on his food. Now, what did Feltman actually sell? Well, we mentioned the Frankfurter or the hot dog, but he was well known for what was known as a shore dinner. That included fish as the basic ingredient of most of the meals. Feltman's had a number of restaurants on site after the first 10 or 20 years, including the Maple Garden, and you can see two orchestras, dancing was a big part of the entertainment, the Alpine Garden, the Boardwalk and Surf Avenue cafes, there was also Deutsche Gardens, in fact, up to seven different restaurants. And before long, Feltman's was truly caterers to the millions. Here's an amazing aerial view of Coney Island by night. See the tens of thousands of electric light bulbs lighting up the night sky? This is Luna Park, shot around the turn of the century, possibly from the Dreamland Tower or even the old Iron Tower. The Lunar Park entrance here is right across Surf Avenue from Feltman's. You can see that sign at the bottom of the screen showing Feltman's. Of course it was mostly but dark because of all the maple trees and the covered gardens that it had. Coney Island around the turn of the century, that is coming into the early 1900s, developed quickly. But the mainstay of Feltman's was his big round building on the corner of Surf Avenue and West 10th Street. Inside this large round building was the Feltman's Carousel, or Merry-Go-Round, and it was incredibly popular in dragging in the families, most of which were quite well-to-do, the wealthy holiday in Coney Island back in that time. Large crowds assembled every evening right through the summer at Feltman's, and he offered not only the restaurants and bars, but cigar stands and later on many other attractions other than the food to drag people into his massive restaurant complex. It provided quite a calming effect compared to the hustle and bustle that was going on just outside his door throughout the rest of Coney Island. Often hot and tired customers would come to Feltman's for a meal that was known for its quality and also a cold drink of beer. The restaurant expanded and could seat up to 8,000 people at a single setting. The Maple Garden and Alpine Garden offered dining amongst calm and cooling trees during the hot summer nights. Up to 1,200 staff were available to serve your every need. One of the very clever methods that Feltman had for promoting his business was through postcards, which were going through a boom. They were cheap to buy and cheap to send. And in fact, Feltman's would offer to post the card for you with a stamp if you bought the postcard at the Feltman's restaurant. Here's a good lineup of what he called the Epicure's Parade, led by the clam. 
Now the clam was raked up in their millions from the shore, not far from Feltman's restaurant. They could be served baked or soft steamed and of course included in clam chowder. Lobster, fish, you can see corn, and of course the frankfurter. Always important to the Feltman operation, but the shore dinner, which included fish and often hamburger and chicken as well, was the popular item that was served at Feltman's. He had up to seven different restaurants serving these, all varying slightly in their decor and what they offered. But beer was an important part, particularly the German ales, in all his offerings. Here's another postcard from a few years later. Ye old fashioned clam bake, only $1.25. You can see hamburgers making an appearance and chicken, along with the lobster, fish, clams, always prevalent in everything that Feltman did, corn, and of course, plenty to drink and all the condiments as well. As the 1910s moved into the 1920s, changes were happening, as they were constantly along Coney Island. A new boardwalk was built at the rear of Feltman's and it cut them off from the beach. But that was an advantage because Feltman's had always been on the busy thoroughfare of Surf Avenue and now was on the busy boardwalk as well. Patrons could enter Feltman's from the rear entrance right from the boardwalk or from Surf Avenue. Other changes were taking place as well. The original mash of different restaurants and the carousel rotunda seen here right at the front were hidden behind a much newer facade which gave the appearance of being slightly more modern and of the times. Still the same old Feltman's inside, but big changes taking place outside. Feltman's were always trying to adapt with more amusements to bring their customers in to sample the food. They had a giant outdoor movie theatre that screened the latest films from Charlie Chaplin and other famous silent comedians. It was open all summer and the customers sat in outdoor chairs and enjoyed the cool sea breezes. Another less successful venture was adding their own roller coaster called the Ziz. It apparently wasn't such a fun ride and didn't offer as many thrills as the dozens of other roller coasters all up and down Surf Avenue on Coney Island. Let's take a tour of Feltman's as it was in the 1920s. We start up the front at Surf Avenue and you can see the carousel or the merry-go-round and a cigar stand, of course, which were very popular back in the 1920s. There's a garden for basket parties or as we know them, picnics. And then we go to the Woodland Restaurant. There was parking added in the 1920s in the rear off West 10th Street. And the Beach Cafe replaced the silent outdoor theatre all the way up to the boardwalk and the beach. Here's the fishery and the clam bar, very popular. Of course, they were just off the main arcade that you can see going through the main part of the restaurant complex. Clams were still the mainstay. Clam chowder, freshly shucked clams, always available at Feltman's all year long. The Alpine Garden through to the famous Maple Garden. Two orchestras every afternoon and evening and back up to the front where they had the German beer bar and sandwiches and frankfurters, always a part of Feltman's. From 3,700 customers per year, the crowd at Feltman's grew rapidly through the late 1800s and into the 1900s. The opening of the subway and the boardwalk swelled the audience every single day during summer at Feltman's. 50,000 a year, 500,000 a year, a million a year, until the 1920s culminated in a massive 5 million customers per year. Feltman's was truly number one amongst all the restaurants in the world. The boardwalk, the subway, the ferries, the streetcars, all funneled the customers into Feltman's. In fact, this peak was so huge, not only at Feltman's but at Coney Island, it would never again get such great numbers because the 30s, 40s and ensuing years it all started to decline. An employee of Feltman's by the name of Nathan Handworker was slicing hot dogs during World War I. He had the idea that instead of selling the Frankfurters for 10 cents each, he could sell them for 5 cents each. So he rented a stand further down Surf Avenue and the Nathan's Empire was born. He added 
Other items to his menu, including drinks and roast beef sandwiches, hamburgers, and being opposite the subway station, his business boomed. Meanwhile, through various generations of the Feltman family, Feltman's was struggling. The 1930s dealt a big blow to his high-cost shore dinners. By World War II and the 1950s, things had changed even further. New attractions were added, a little kiddie ride amusement park, but all to no avail, and the family sold out of the business in the late 1940s. A succession of owners tried to make the best of the Feltman's former empire, but it fell on hard times. From the 1960s, most of the old Feltmans had been completely demolished and Astroland Park occupied the site for most of the next 50 years. It was quite successful in its day and one of the shining beacons during a period of decline at Coney Island. These days, the same Feltman's piece of land between Surf Avenue and the boardwalk is occupied by the new Lunar Park. So for almost a century and a half, the Feltman's piece of land has been entertaining the millions. Thanks for listening and enjoying this homage to Feltman's. There's a great deal of information available on Feltman's and Coney Island history in general on the web. Two of the best sites to find information are Geoffrey Stanton's excellent Coney Island history site and the Coney Island History Project. Some of the great books include Coney Island, Postcard Journey to the City of Fire by Richard Snow and the various books by Charles Denson, including Coney Island Lost and Found and the excellent Coney Island and Astro Land. If you're in Coney Island, of course, you can visit the Coney Island History Project Small Museum right on the boardwalk. And I appreciate the information and research that these gentlemen and ladies have done in the past all adding to the history of the great Coney Island and Feltman story.